Hey guys, Derek here from Back to Reality. So Paul and I are out in the garden today and we're trying to mound up all of our potatoes to try and encourage more of the tubers to grow underneath. And we found something that we think is pretty cool and we thought you might as well. So come check it out. So if you've been following along for a while now, you probably remember that we have been experimenting with a bunch of different types of permaculture gardening and other non-traditional gardening techniques. For instance, in this case, we've been using the Ruth Stout method, which is a type of sheet mulching or no dig gardening, no till gardening. There's a bunch of different names for it, but basically what it means is that in the fall, we took a bunch of spoiled hay and spread it out on what used to be pretty much just some lawn. And then in the spring, we spread some of that hay aside, threw in our seed potatoes. And now, as you can see, we've got a whole bunch of potato plants growing pretty successfully with this method. So just like any other method of growing potatoes, we need to make sure that we hill them up periodically throughout the summer. We've been using so far just the spoiled hay, but we've recently run out. So now we've switched to using some of these old leaves from last summer. I think they'll work just as well. But everybody knows that potatoes are tubers that grow underneath the ground, usually the soil, in our case mulch. But we don't usually give a whole lot of thought to what grows above the ground in the leaves and stems. And that's what we want to talk about today. So if you've ever grown your own potatoes, then chances are all of these big leafy plants look pretty familiar to you. And if you've done it a number of years, then chances are you've also seen some of these potato flowers. But usually these potato flowers drop off in the early spring, and so you don't get a chance to see the next thing we want to show you. This is the cool thing. Come over here. So if the conditions are right, and the weather is cool enough, and there's enough rain, then some of those flowers will actually stick around long enough to get pollinated. And when they do, they end up sprouting potato fruit. So in our case, it's near the end of July, and it has been relatively cool this year. But more importantly, we have had record-breaking amounts of rain, which is kind of nuts considering that last year we had record-breaking amounts of drought. But I guess these things are somewhat cyclical. In any case, it's kind of a cool experience because now in our first time ever trying to grow potatoes, we get to see something that most potato growers never get to see. And there's a reason why these potato fruit look pretty similar to little green cherry tomatoes. And it's because they're actually related to tomatoes. You see, potatoes are actually part of the nightshade family. Just like our tomatoes, our peppers, and our eggplants. But the reason why you've probably never heard of potato fruit before is because unlike all of the other members of the nightshade family, potato fruit are completely poisonous. You don't want to eat these. They contain a toxin called solanine. In fact, the nightshade family is also known as the solanaceous family. In any case, don't ever eat these little guys. And if you've got kids around, you probably want to pick these and dispose of them before they might get their hands on them. So why do potatoes have these little fruit? Well, it's the same reason as any other fruit bearing plant. It's all about reproduction. Each one of these little fruit, once they're fully ripened, contain up to 300 seeds for new potato plants. So now you might be wondering, if potatoes grow fruit that contain hundreds of seeds each, why don't we ever plant potatoes from true seeds instead of seed potatoes? Why aren't stores filled with little packets of potato seeds every planting season? And the reason seems to be somewhat complicated, but essentially the seeds that come from these plants will actually grow a new variety of potato. If you want to stick with the same potato that you know is delicious and nutritious and will grow well in your area, it's best to stick with the tubers from the plants instead. Because whenever you're planting those, those potatoes from a previous potato crop, you're essentially growing a clone of that crop. It shares the same genetics. So you're guaranteed to get a potato that's exactly the same as the potato you grew last year. From what I've read, the seeds themselves are really only used by large growers who are trying to breed new types of potatoes that might be more resistant to certain diseases or have a slightly different flavor, texture, color, etc. Um, but either way, they take apparently years to produce actual harvestable potatoes from them. So it just doesn't really make sense for home gardeners like us to try and use them. That might be something that's fun to experiment with in the future, but for the time being, we already have a lot of experiments going on and I don't know that we can fit any more in. 
So the reason why we wanted to share this with you is because obviously it's pretty cool. Most people don't get a chance to see potato fruit growing on a plant. But the other reason is because when I first read about this about a month ago while we were researching how to grow potatoes, it was the first time I'd ever even heard of it. And since then I've mentioned it to a whole bunch of people, even people who have grown their own food before, and none of them have ever heard of potato fruit either. But potato is one of the most harvested crops in North America and around much of the world. It's one of the staple food sources for many of the people on our planet and has been for hundreds of years and for some people even thousands of years. And yet we never even knew about this thing. I think this really just goes to show that we have such a disconnect for so many of us between the food on our plate and the actual source of that food. Most of us buy our food in the grocery store these days and so we tend to forget that this is actually just part of nature, that it grows somewhere and it has its own you know life cycles of reproduction and, and everything else. It's really fascinating to see what happens and how our food is produced and this is for us part of getting back to reality and it's what we want to share with you. We've learned so much in our garden this year and I think that we probably will continue to in the years to come. So we want to know, have you ever seen potato fruit before? Is there any other discovery that you've ever made about the plants that you've grown? Things that you didn't know that you learned from your own garden? Let us know in the comments. We'd really like to hear about it. But for now, we got to get back to you actually mounding these potatoes or else we're never going to have any of them on our plate. So we'll see you soon. Oh yeah, so once again we got way too curious and had to actually feel underneath the mulch and see if we had any actual potato tubers growing. And check it out, we've got a small little red potato and what I think is a russet. And both of them look absolutely delicious. Can't wait till they get bigger.